Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. I'm in London. Behind me is number 297, Fulham Road. You would never guess that this uh, very anodyne and pleasant supermarket was once the Black House. It was so called because it was the headquarters of the British Union of Fascists, the BUF. They uh, were commonly called the Black Shirts. Their leader was Sir Oswald Mosley, and he liked to talk about his movement as Black Shirts and welcome Black Shirt government because the Italian fascists wore black shirts and so on. So it's really just the, um, this had my left hand side, it was that bit was 297. Uh, so Sir Oswald Mosley, who was born in, um, let me see, 1896, into a wealthy family in the Midlands, he inherited a baronetcy, that's why Sir Oswald Mosley wasn't knighted by the monarch. And he went to Winchester College, he served with some distinction in the Great War, in the army, in the Royal Flying Corps, that's now the RAF, elected an MP for Harrow, Conservative MP, was a Labour MP, set up the New Party. Finally, in 1932, he set up the British Union of Fascists. It later added and National Socialists to its name. So um, he'd run out of patience with a parliamentary government, and he thought that the, there should be an authoritarian government. He looked at what Mussolini was doing in Italy, and later what Hitler was doing in Germany, he thought that was the way forward. Um, and the government must have very extensive powers to tackle mass unemployment. And he peppered his uh, uh, very fine and moving oratory with anti-Semitic bile. So it was certainly racist. Now I know some ladies here say, oh, I didn't attack them as Jews, just certain Jewish interests, trying to get around it that way. Now even when he, when he himself wasn't explicitly anti-Semitic, his subordinates certainly were. And later, in the, in the, after the Second World War, he was completely against uh, Commonwealth immigration people, black people from the Caribbean or people from India and so forth, coming to resign in the United Kingdom, despite being an imperialist. Complete contrast to me. I'm a sentimental imperialist, which is why I welcome Commonwealth immigration. People from former colonies who want to live in the United Kingdom, up to a reasonable number, and if they're desirable individuals, fine, let's have race mixing. He had the complete uh, opposite attitude. Anyway, so the BUF, they went around in their, in their uniforms and they were very anti-communist, despite espousing some socialist policies and saying they're very sympathetic towards the plight of the proletariat. It's, it's hard to understand just how severe poverty was at the time. Unemployment to, uh, reached 20% at one stage. People would have just enough to eat if they had unemployment benefit. They would never waste a morsel. They might be w wearing worn out shoes, things like that, not be able to heat their flats. Um, so. Chelsea was quite a sort of a hotbed activity for them. It was nothing like as plush back then as it is now. Yes, there were some very well-to-do people. There are also very working-class areas here, well into the 1990s, which has been a working-class pub around the corner. So um, that was that. They were parading around. You can see some footage on YouTube of them marching over, I think it's Lambeth Bridge. And, uh, and then the famous is the Battle of Cable, Bridge, C Cable Street. 1935, the Public Order Act had forbidden them to wear uniforms, or any, any organization could wear paramilitary uniforms in public. And the BBC wouldn't broadcast the speeches. BBC was the only radio station in the United Kingdom. He'd lost a seat in Parliament, uh, and uh, they stood for local council seats, had limited success there. So they're very strong in London, to some extent in Lancashire, particularly Manchester, these depressed industrial areas. They, they were campaigned in Scotland a bit. In the countryside, it seemed to be very feeble, they um, had that, that author of Tar Tarka the Otter, what's his name? Is it Henry Williamson, Roy Williamson, was, uh, was on their side. Um, uh, G.K. Chesterton, the cousin of A.K. Chesterton, and so on. So the Second World War came along and he was complete, peace Nick said, mind Britain's business, held a huge rally at Olympia, not far away, a huge indoor rally ground or place for staging shows and trade fairs. Who the heck would die for Beck? A reference to Colonel Joseph Beck the Polish Foreign Secretary. Mind Britain's business, he said. He would do anything to keep the United Kingdom at peace. And he said that Hitler has said a thousand times, Nazism is not a good for export. He doesn't wish to impose his ideology on us. That's it, we should stay out of it, it's not our problem. He was virulently anti-communist, as I pointed out. Anyway, the war broke out. He called on his, his followers to be patriotic. Now, some say that means, he said, when well, they should fight for their country, that uh, war was the wrong decision, but once wars have been declared, you must fight to the utmost of your power. Others say, no, by this he meant sabotage the war effort because that was a patriotic thing to do, according to Mosley. Um, but anyway, Churchill became Prime Minister on the 10th of May, 1940, and he soon formed a coalition with the Labour Party and the Liberals. And Labour's price for doing that was to um, uh, initiate some powers under 
Regulation 18B of the Defence of the Realms Act, which is uh, habeas corpus was suspended, Mosley and some of his acolytes were interned. They were locked up without trial or charge in Holloway Prison. You know, however, he, he was in some comfort there. He was allowed to hire other servants, other prisoners as servants. His wife had just given birth to their second son, and she was sent there too. The BUF was outlawed, and that was that. In 1944, the situation had calmed reasonably, and the, the immediate danger had passed. I mean, D-Day was underway, so he was set free. Uh, so that was that. His party was not restarted after the Second World War. He was living in the Republic of Ireland uh, for a while in Fermoy, County Cork, latterly, latterly in, in Galway. It was a, the fire they suffered there. His, his two elder sons have been to Eton. His two sons with the second wife, well, they were with him in Ireland and latterly in France. He finally got his passport back in 1950, moved to Paris. Despite being an immigrant himself, uh, he railed against immigration into this country when the people were not white. So surely that's got to be racist, saying that somehow we can't live together, that we're so different. Seems to be like complete bunkum to me. I have much more in common with the average black Britisher than I do with Sir Oswald. Uh, so that's that. His new party after the Second World War was called the Union Movement. He stood in the Kensington North by-election um, by because Kensington North was an area where a lot of um, black people from the Antilles settled. And of course, he was saying, oh, it's dreadful, they mustn't be allowed in here. An absolute nonsense. When he was in Royal Holloway, initially he was sharing a cell with a black man. A lot of people thought that was very droll. Well, you would find that deeply upsetting, but he said, in his, his autobiography, My Life. No, actually, he got like got along quite well and I'm not remotely racialist. Well, that is the uh, British Indian of fascists. They will not be missed. And I think most people here, uh, the, the, the supermarket probably rather aghast to know who previously occupied that site. <laughs>